extra minutes. One evening, when Saru was just five, the boys headed for the local railway station to scavenge for food and loose change. It was late and Saru was tired, so Guru told him to rest on a bench, promising to return soon. It was the last Saru would see of his brother. When Saru woke up all alone, he panicked and jumped on the nearest train, believing Guru must be on board. He was nowhere to be seen. I was really hoping that he was on the train, but, but he wasn't. So you fell into a fitful sleep, thinking that when you woke up, you might be home or you'd see your brother again. When you did wake up, where were you? Well, I don't know where I was. There's, I, was I knew I was on a train that was uh, hurtling on the, the railway with uh, sort of a, a scenery out the window that really resembled nothing that I really knew. And uh, it, was, it was such a panic um, because I ran up and down and, and it was, it was, my heart was just going triple time. It was just so, I was so scared. This is just a, a, a runaway train going to somewhere that I've, I don't know. And there was no one who could help you? No one. I just cried and, um, and cried and, and called out to my brother, but, you know, he was, he was never there. It was, it was very daunting and, and scary. Can you picture yourself? Do you see yourself as that five-year-old? Oh, yes. And the time of the year it was too. A lot of, a lot of things happened. And uh, as scary as it was, it, it was, you just had to go through it uh, and live it, live it at a day at a time. Mm -hmm. Where did you find food? Where did you sleep in those first few days? Just um, sometimes the people uh, had uh, peanuts and they'd be on the ground and, you know, it was amongst dirt. Food that was thrown away on the side, half eaten. If you found food on the ground, and it was smelt right, you ate it. If it was half eaten, three quarters eaten food that someone had just five seconds ago threw away, you ate that. Th that's how it was. It's, if there wasn't anything there, there wasn't anything. How often did you think of your brothers and your mum and sister? All the time. Every, every minute almost. I'd had passed all the, the crying and the asking, where's my brother, where's my mother, my sisters. And even though I was sitting down and thinking, I learned to pick myself up. And just thought, right, I'm on my own. I'm the only one who can get me through this. That's right. That's exactly what I did. What probably should have happened to you, which I think probably happens to most children who are lost in a place like Calcutta, you end up working for gangs. You get beaten up. You end up in the sex industry. None of that happened to you. How is it that you were rescued? <laughs> I think the energy of the universe was uh, pushing me from, you know, from going over here to over here. It could have happened, but it didn't. I was, because I was on the move all the time, I was at the right place at the right time. And, and so many right places at the right time occurred. And, you know, still to date, I sort of wonder why it was like that. It's like, is something looking down or something sort of helping me guide through this mega city of thousands and millions of people? Because really, when you listen to your story, you should have died in Calcutta. You shouldn't have survived. Yeah, that's right. You give me a goose pimples then. Um, <laughs> you must have a guardian angel, someone looking over your shoulder. Yes. I think so too. There's just something out there that's just, um, you know, protecting me.